So we are here at Lake Norman State Park, which is just north of Charlotte, North Carolina, in the Piedmont region of North Carolina. Um, and we are just getting their fire program started. It's been a long time. This park has gone for a long time with fire suppression. And so we are working really hard with a lot of partners, including North Carolina Forest Service, to get prescribed burning going in this, this park again. And it's really critical because this park has a tremendous amount of shortleaf pine up on these ridge tops. And you look around and you can see there's lots of leaf litter, shaded forest floor. We have lots of large shortleaf pine, but no regeneration. And that's because of fire suppression. Since Europeans first arrived in the US and um, colonized this area, we've seen a tremendous amount of change across the landscape. There have been several hundred years and several cycles of logging and replanting and logging again, as well as converting land use from virgin forest to agricultural fields to grazing uh, landscapes. Shortleaf pine has really been impacted with these uh, changes in land use. The species composition in our forests have changed um, from a lot of different driving forces, not just logging where trees are removed or turning uh, space to ag fields, but also um, a loss of fire. Around the turn of the 20th century, 1910, we had a series of really catastrophic wildfires out west that um, really scared uh, the human population in the U.S. It was a, a frightening thing. We didn't understand fire's role in the forest. And so when that happened, that kind of initiated a lot of our efforts for fire suppression, where we wanted to put out every fire as soon as possible. And that changed our, what our forests look like, what species live there. And that really impacted shortleaf pine. Uh, shortleaf pine really, uh, historically, the range reached from New Jersey all the way down through the southeast over to Texas across the Mississippi. Um, and now, currently, there's less than 10% of shortleaf pine um, existing on its historic range. Prescribed fire is used um, and very beneficial for shortleaf pine in particular. Um, this pine is well adapted for prescribed fire. It has this thick, blocky, flaky bark that can kind of just shrug off fire as it moves through the landscape. Um, especially when there's frequent fire, then it's more low intensity fire. And so the flames will not be as high and it really doesn't impact uh, an adult or full grown tree. Saplings have a special kind of hook or a crook in their root system that really is where they store all their nutrients. And so even when a fire moves through and a sapling, maybe the top is burned off or it's top killed, it doesn't really phase the shortleaf there either because it's got all its nutrients underground, insulated in the soil, and it resprouts pretty quick. And so shortleaf pine is well adapted. And also shortleaf pine is pretty shade intolerant when it's starting to grow up in the forest. It needs lots of sunlight, not like what we see here. We need more fire in this forest. We need more sunlight hitting the ground so that it can get that head start. There's a lot of benefits to um, conducting prescribed burns, um, not just from the ecological standpoint of maintaining a healthy, um, higher biodiversity forest, to me, one of the biggest benefits to having prescribed fire is that it reduces fuel loads and um, reduces the fire intensity when we are conducting burns, especially with frequent burns that really brings down that intensity. Prescribed burning to me really is fire on our terms. And so that means that it's our weather parameters that we prefer. It's, we have those fire lines in place and they are ready, they're prepped to hold a fire. Um, it's our preferred intensity. And so again, it's on our terms and that is just astronomically safer for communities and firefighters. And that to me is the most important benefit right there.